That was a challenge <laughs> I was coming to. That was a joke I'm coming to. Say one sentence in Indian English accent. Go on, you have to. Oh, you have to give me the sentence though. It's gonna sound okay. Cool. Butter chicken. Try, try, try. You're singing a song right now. Come on. Try. Yes. Butter chicken. Got this. Uh, great. So, uh, hello, the good people of the internet. Today we have with us the singer-songwriter, actually the Indian Australian singer-songwriter, Mona Patel, with us. She's a singer-songwriter and a producer herself, currently residing in Perth. Welcome on board, and thank you so much for taking some time out to do this, Mona. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yep. So it's 10:30 at your place, and I'm <laughs> in India, disturbing her all the way. So great, uh, great, uh, you know, integrity I have. So anyway, <laughs> so first and foremost, <laughs> we would like to begin with your musical career. So you were born in India, right? Yeah, I was born yeah. in India. Correct. Take us through how much of uh, t- the time you spent over on India and what you saw in the music industry as a singer songwriter yourself and a producer. in india and what's the difference between where you live right now which is australia perth and indian music industry yeah okay wow <clears throat> they're getting right into it okay <laughs> <laughs> so i was 5 when i left india but i was actually going back and forth traveling anyways um since about the age of mid 20s i would say So I think for about six, six, seven years, I was just sort of traveling back and forth. Um, I was doing vocal teaching work. I was doing a bit of acting, a lot of voice acting. I did TVCs and things like that. And um, I always sort of wanted to get into original music, but I didn't feel like I was good enough, and I didn't feel confident enough. I didn't think I was talented enough. And um, it wasn't until sort of my late twenties, and I really had to just like get around. the psychology behind it and say why are you not doing this you know um just give it a shot um you never know what's going to happen if you just try so i would say one of the biggest differences um between the indian music industry and the australian music industry i mean it's it's incomparable actually it's there's just they're just so different um first of all like the language is like what i love about india is just the the hindustani classical vocals you've got the bollywood um which i've also started um i'm going to be doing classes so i'm actually learning hindustani classical and bollywood oh. myself that's something that i've always wanted to do so i have a bit of time now so um yeah i love that whole aspect the fact that it's so bilingual in india you know you've got your western pop singers and you've got your bollywood playback singers and i just love that um you don't really find that here <laughs> it's not as diverse um and yeah just all the different flavors that are in india it's just like nowhere else in the world when it comes to music like you go to the south and you have a different sound you go to the north you have punjab you have punjabi music you know it's just incredible um here in australia you won't really find that <laughs> you'll just find different genres um which is like everywhere um but you would have like predominantly everyone singing in english so that's kind of the culture over there so in terms of uh, getting it off the ground you know you being a musician how hard is it is to pull off <laughs> having a career in india versus australia <laughs> honestly it depends on how it depends on your audience it depends on your marketing strategy it depends on what you want um so yeah like it just i feel like it doesn't matter what genre of music you decide to delve into you're always going to find an audience you're always going to find a group of people that resonate with your song or your message so it's just about tapping into that and figuring out where is your audience going to be is it going to be in china is it going to be india is it going to be australia is it going to be worldwide is it going to be america so i think once you figure that out 
it becomes a whole lot easier to um, market yourself. And um, yeah, I'm not big on, I hate focusing on the numbers. A lot of musicians get very stuck on this many streams, gotcha. this many followers. I mean, at the end of the 0. day, zero point zero 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 two dollars per stream. Such rich we are, <laughs> so rich we it's, are. It's 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 just absolutely awful how much we get paid. Um, so you can't really focus on the numbers because I keep telling people like the money will come. You just focus on your skill set. If you believe in your skill set, you keep honing your craft. Um, everything else will fall into place. People will start to recognize you as a contender and somebody with talent, somebody that they want to listen to, somebody that they want to go and see perform live. Um, so, yeah, focus on the skill set. Um, of course, image is important, but it's not everything, in my opinion. So, yeah. Great. So as a as a sarcastic joke, I would like to say, <laughs> you say focus on your skill set and the other stuff will arrive with that. In India, it's opposite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what's it like in India? It's more about the image, I suppose. Yeah, you can say that. Absolutely. Like, uh, skill set is the last. <laughs> like, I'm the sarcastic OS. Yes. The skill set is the last uh, thing people watch. Before that, you're his son, you're his daughter, you're, you know. Yeah, yeah, you have spent $5 yeah. million dollars in Facebook advertising. So a lot of stuff yeah. happens. So, I mean, uh, I'm pretty mm-hmm. proud of the fact that I'm an independent artist. I'm not backed by any major label, um, but yet I've still been able to manage some pretty incredible press um, over the last couple of years. And that's just not spending a cent. So it just goes to show, like, you know, if you do have the talent, you can get out there and you can put yourself out there and people will recognize that if you've put that work in. Um, I do understand what you're saying about the whole nepotism thing. I don't have any godfather in India that's going to help me out. I don't have any Yay. godfather in the music industry that's going to help <laughs> me out. So I'm basically surviving on my skills. Um, so that said and done, I am very proud of how far I've come and what I've achieved because, yeah, to come all this way just based on your talent, I mean, that's pretty rare nowadays. Yep. Most people have and paid Especially if you were born in a country like India. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like most yeah. people have paid, like you said, millions of lakhs in paying off this person or paying for Facebook advertising. And, yeah, it's it's just the way the market the digital marketing world works right now and or you have this name attached to you you know it's <laughs> branding sadly, and all of those marketing yeah. terms you know so much stuff yes yes absolutely um when did you think of uh taking music as a career or singing songwriting as a career and also you're a producer which we'll come to that in a very soon i have a habit of actually yeah. asking 10 different questions in one go but I'll not do that. Otherwise, you'll probably go out of the session. Um, uh, <laughs> how did you choose to become a singer-songwriter? How did you start your career? Like, if you tell us briefly, like, there are listeners, I, I should say this to you, there are listeners who are really, who really want to be musicians but are not finding such uh, prolific ways of understanding how the industry works, right. but it's so distorted. Yeah, honestly, it was just a very... A topsy turvy way, like there was no straight way for me to get to this career path. It was just going through life and realizing I had so much that I wanted to say and so much that I wanted to express. And the best way that I could do that was through music. And it was just a way that when people would listen to my songs, they would feel like something. So I just realized, like, hey, this is a great way for me to reach out to people and say hey look do you do you feel me like do you empathize with me like do you feel my pain <laughs> so yeah it just it it was something that i had kind of thought about in my early 20s but like i mentioned before just never had the opportunity never had the confidence plagued with a lot of self doubt i still am but it's a constant you know i don't see that progress. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I come across as very self-confident, but we all have our demons that we have to work Yeah, at. for sure. 
Yeah, so it is, it's always a, um, a mind game. You always have to kind of stay on top of your mind and say, hey, it's okay, you got this. Not every day is great, you know, not every day is perfect, but it's okay. You just have to kind of keep moving forward and find ways to keep going forward. You say to yourself that it sucks. <laughs> we can't say that because then you're going to give up. <laughs> I do sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, that that's some that's some real heavy negative self talk. I definitely yeah. avoid that now. <laughs> I, I watch a video of my, I uh, showed a video of mine. I see that and I'm like, well, congratulations, you suck. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, okay no. let, let's do it once more. Well, actually, no. Look, I'll give you a healthy perspective on that as well. Sure. You you might have had a video that you did when you were starting off, and oh my God. you might have continued to do videos after that point. Am I right? Yeah, it's like the sure. first song you ever wrote. The first song we all ever wrote probably sucked. Yeah, for it sure. It was not a hit. You know, it took maybe 50, 100 songs, you know, for a lot of artists to get to a point where they have that one song where they're like, oh, yeah. wait, this is kind of okay. You know, I can actually release this. It doesn't sound that bad. Yeah. This, this, people could listen to this without their ears bleeding. So... That's, but it's always good to have that video or that song there as an example of, oh, look, this is where I've actually come from. So be proud yeah. of that journey. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Everyone yeah. has to start. I mean, I, I know it sounds very, like, you know, boring and cliche to say, but everyone has to, somewhere that they have to start. Like, you yeah, have to, sure. even if it's rock bottom, you got to start there and you got to work your way up. And, I mean, I know for a fact that if I just, in my first year of songwriting, if I just, gave up because my songs were pretty shitty. I don't think I would be able to be able to write the songs that I'm writing now. I had to continue to work at it and hone at it and hone those skills. So it's a continuous work in progress. <laughs> Inconvenience regretted, huh? Um, <laughs> so, so back to the question of how, when you think of starting to move as a career, yeah, so I, I would say late 20s is when I actually was like, okay, you know what, I should give this a shot. But I didn't have my first professional release till I think about 28, 29. And th that song is not even on anywhere. I removed oh. it because I was just so embarrassed. I was like, oh, my God, I can't have that up there now. <laughs> I have way better songs out now. So I just remember removing them eventually. Um because I was like, it's, this is not a good reflection of like my artistry, but I do have the songs. They're just not available to stream. <laughs> I get that. Uh, yeah. What was the first release of your career you like to mention? The first song released and what was your reaction after that? So I think one of the first songs I did was a song with a Sony producer. It was called um, Delusional. Delusional. And I was in, it was a rock, very rock based song. We had about 10 layers of electronic guitars in the music production. Oh. And we'd spent about 40 hours in the studio making the track. And I remember I was so proud of that song because it was like one of the first professional songs I'd ever got out. And um, yeah, but like now looking back on it, I'm like, no, like the audio quality was just, you know, not, not there. <laughs> right My recording quality just wasn't there. And now that I learned how to produce music, like I can hear that now. Yeah. At that time, I had no idea. I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds great, you know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and, and, after 10 years, and after 10 years, we're like, no, actually, no, this can happen that way, this tweaking, this thing. Yeah. yeah it's just it's and also music's always changing sounds are always changing as well so with especially with the mixing and the mastering you just mm. have to constantly stay on top of your game new plugins so, yeah yes and there's always new ones coming out as well yeah. like and there's yeah. always and all the doors are always getting upgraded so you have to keep learning the new door that comes out well interesting um did you professionally learn singing? Did you go to school? Or where did you learn singing in India? And then when do you like when um, do you shift in Australia? No, so I started singing uh, when I was in Australia. Uh, okay. I started taking private vocal classes. And then when I turned 14, I decided that I wanted to do it a little bit more professionally. So I enrolled myself in a two-year jazz contemporary certificate. So oh. I did that from 14 to 16. So I learned, like, you know, the proper techniques. So you were in Australia while you were 14? 
No, no, no. Yeah, I was in Australia. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I was five when um, I left India. So I was really oh, okay. when we left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have an accent, so obviously I grew up in Australia. <laughs> I have the Aussie accent. That was a challenge <laughs> I was coming to. That was a joke I'm coming to. Say one sentence in Indian English accent. Go on, you have to. Oh, you have to give me the sentence, though. It's going to sound okay. awful. Butter chicken. Oh, God. Try, try, try. You're a singer-songwriter. Come on. Try. Yes. Butter chicken. Yes. How was that? You got this. Now send some butter chicken. <coughs> like, like do, do you love butter chicken? Yes, I love butter chicken. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yes, that's the accent. That's the accent. Wow. Where you have this accent, oh, great. But yeah, I mean, it, it, butter chicken is as famous as Shah Rukh Khan in India. So yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very beautiful. Um, yeah. <laughs> how, how do you write your songs? Take us through your songwriting process and any, any you know, five ways you write songs in 10 ways or you just sit down and without anything with an empty head and just sit down and like okay what message do i have to deliver through the song how do you, what's your process of writing through songs yeah oh that's yeah that's a really good question um so sometimes i get randomly inspired by a life event or just something i've seen in front of me um and i just decide you know what i'm just going to randomly write a song here and now and i just I a song and I come up with some lyrics and a melody if I'm in the mood. Other times, if I'm in a professional setup and I'm with uh, a producer and we've decided, hey, we're going to be working on a track, um, that's a completely different experience altogether because then I have to switch over and I have to um, come up with an idea. If we have an idea, then start coming up with top line melodies and then work out the lyrics. So my process is generally idea inspiration and then after that, it would be melodies and hooks and the arrangement of where the melodies are going to fit. And then lastly, I like to work on the lyrics at the end. I don't really start with the lyrics. A lot of people start with the lyrics, but I like to start with my ideas and let it sort of grow organically from there and see what kind of happens. Oh, okay. So for you, lyrics, writing the lyrics is, is the last part. You just find the structure yeah. first of the song. Yeah, and, and the vibe and the melody and the production. Because for me, that is personally, like I relate to the melody of a song much more than the lyrics of a song. So lyrics can be changed. But if that hook is exactly how you want it, if that arrangement or that production is exactly how you want it, um, then I get more inspired when I'm writing the lyrics. Oh. Well, pretty interesting. Um... So you were five when you left India. Uh, so I'm not going to be asking questions about India. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I was very little. But I have lived in India, though. I have lived in India. So, I lived so in India. after five, you never came back to India or you just stayed over there? Or both? Oh, I did. No, 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 I did. Yeah, no, I came back oh. in my 20s. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've been living in India. I've been living in Mumbai like oh, for Mumbai, quite okay. some time. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I like okay. it. It's nice. Only when you came, came during your 20s, you have learned... To, to spell butter chicken. You have to learn the accent <laughs> well, over here. Have I really learned? I mean, it's a bit questionable, isn't it? Well, it sounded <laughs> nice. It sounded fairly convincing. I mean, you know, we can't <laughs> complain. It's butter chicken. Go on. How, how the hell we spell it? Oh. It still will taste how good. How hard anyway. can it be? But I, I should definitely keep working on my diction, my Indian accent. I'll keep accent. working at it. So next time, next time I see you, the next song, that I release, I'll come and see you. And I'll be like, look, I've been working on it. <laughs> then my question will be like, okay, well, you're working on the song you've been producing or you're working on the accent? <laughs> yeah, uh, multitasking, multitasking. <laughs> talent. We, we, we have talented people from India. Well, great. <laughs> well, well uh, by living in India, we, I, I uh, interact with so many people on podcasts. Uh -huh. uh, I, previously, I was... Uh, podcasting with someone who uh, who was from uh, US, from the US, and I slowly get, got that accent. Like if, if I talk like this, you'll not feel that I'm from India. You know, you have to you have <laughs> to roll your R's more though with the American. Okay, if you American. talk okay. like this, 
Yeah. So, like, and you have to exaggerate the first vowel of every word. Like more. I'm, I, that's I'm, happy. That's I'm, ha I'm happy with butter chicken. <laughs> Um, as an independent artist, what do you think? Okay, so first and foremost, an independent artist, who can be an independent artist? Uh, a singer songwriter, producer, suppose independent, uh, any instrumental player, any band. What is meant, see, we have a new group of independent artists as well in India. It's, it's like blowing up all those indie songwriters, right? Just have a mm -hmm. ukulele in the hand and just go up on stage and they have millions of fans listening to the song. And it's pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, um, that is incredible. So how does one go ahead and build an independent career? And is there something of this name as an independent musician or independent career? And how, if so, how someone goes ahead and makes that? What's the first yeah. step? I think the first step is working on your skill set. So working on your whatever talent it is that you want to use to get yourself out there. So whether it's mm. playing a guitar or learning how to sing or combining the two together, being a guitarist and a singer, or if you're learning a classical instrument or if you're learning drums or you just want to produce. So I think spending that time on the skills is very important because that's what's going to help you once you start marketing yourself and once you start digitally trying to create a fan base online. Um, so, yeah, I always tell people, like, before jumping ahead 10 steps and doing the branding and the digital marketing and go and get a singing lesson. <laughs> <laughs> they hate it when I say it, but I'm just like... If that's if you want to make your it product long term, in terms of business. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you want to make it long term in this industry, work on your craft. Spend that time in your early teen years, whatever that is, uh, late teens, working on your craft. Then you, once you know, okay, I sound good, I can sing live. Because when you're doing a live show, you just have those few minutes to capture your audience. You don't get retakes like in a studio. Take two. So in a studio, yeah, in a studio you could do, you, you don't know because a recording artist nowadays, you don't even know if they can sing because they might have done 100 takes to get that one take that you hear. So you don't really know. But if you're aiming to do sort of the live performance aspect as well as the recording artist stuff, you need to have that raw skill down. Because people are going to hear you live and they're going to be like, wow, they sound amazing or, you know, they're not that great if you want to keep getting booked for shows and events and things like that. So, yeah, work on the skills and then think about the marketing and the branding and the professional stuff that comes later, you know. Always focus on – it's like if you, were in, if you were a sportsman, you wanted to play professional basketball, for example, if you don't even know the basic skills of dribbling a ball, like how are you going to get onto the basketball team? Yeah. So that. you've got to practice every day, right? So figure out your practice schedule, figure out hiring coaches, hiring a good teacher. Yeah. That's where I would start. Um, and also internet has become the school of democratic opportunities. And yeah. also, also there is something, you know, uh, at, the, at the very primal level, we have this thing like, okay, if, if someone is a singer songwriter, you can just publish your song anywhere you want within, within just yeah. $10, you know, yeah. um, but at the same time, when there's a music crisis, for example, people want to hear more music, but we have 10 million songs uploaded maybe every mm. single day on Spotify. In terms of that competitive environment, uh, how does someone manage their entire portfolio as a music career? Yeah. Like in in, in one, one sentence, it would be like dealing with a competition, but I don't think uh, arts is a very good space to have this word inside. No. Yeah, look, it's a tough one because at the same time, while it's incredibly easy to be a 
musician or an artist nowadays, it's also one of the most increasingly challenging times as well. So there is a lot of pressure at this point in time to have a release and have one million streams or two million streams, you know, or get that kind of press that you're looking for. So I think every day, I think the number that Spotify released was what, I think it was around 40 to 60,000 tracks get day. uploaded per day on spot. And this is just Spotify. So, and we have like over 200 digital platforms out there right now for people to upload music worldwide. So it is incredibly challenging. And I think the what I would say to people is uh, stay in your own lane, focus on the resources which you have, focus on you building your audience that resonate with your music and try as much, as hard as it is, try to block out the noise. What are they doing? What is this artist doing? And on Instagram, I know it's really tempting to go and scroll and spend all day on TikTok and Instagram and see what all the other artists are up to. And it becomes very toxic, it becomes this toxic cycle where you're just comparing yourself to everybody else out there. And I think, yeah, block out the noise and focus on you, focus on your image and your brand and your sound and what you want to get out of it at the end of the day, because it, it's it's your expression. So I always tell people like, it doesn't matter if you have a hundred people listening or if you have a whole stadium with 30,000 people listening, you know, don't focus on that. Focus on the song. Is it, you know, are you happy with the song? Is this, is this something that you're proud of? Um, yeah, it's it's just it's everything to me. Success is very relative. It's a very relative concept. Like for one one artist, just going to a room and performing in front of twenty people is a huge deal, you know. Whereas someone like Justin Bieber with his sellout stadiums, he could do it in his sleep, you know. He, it's yeah. just you can't compare yourself, and I would never advise that. I yeah. Think. Set, set a business plan, set goals, um, and achieve the goals that you want to achieve. Like, don't worry about what anybody else is doing. If you are happy with, you know, doing live performances every weekend or getting a 1,000 streams on your next release as a goal and you hit those goals, amazing, you know. <laughs> That's just focus on you. Focus on what you want and what makes you happy. Well, that was a lot of philosophy. Uh, fantastic answer, by the way. Uh, as musicians, we, we deal with a lot of criticisms and hate all the time, right? So how yeah. does one deal with that in a yeah, short context? So I'm not a very good person to ask. I don't deal with that very well. I mean, I do, as long as it's constructive. Mm -hmm. um, but I just do not like the people that just come to you and they just want to tear you down and they just tell you everything that's wrong about what you're doing and how you can be and, and and don't give you actual constructive advice on how to actually improve. So I don't deal with, I deal with constructive criticism very well, but I do not deal with uh, just flat out judgment criticism like that does affect me. Generally, it messes with my mind because I try to stay very positive. So, yeah, it's a tough one. It's definitely a tough one. You just have to be very strong in yourself and know who you are and know why you're doing what you're doing and um, try to just silence the naysayers and just say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to internalise this and I'm not going to take this personally. Mm. And sometimes uh, criticism is, is very important, I guess. Because it's actually it is. Go further. It is, but as long as it's not like meant to put you down. <laughs> so you yeah. can make the choice. Yeah. Like I, I'm happy to have constructive criticism because I like being challenged. I like someone listening to my songs and saying, hey, you know what? This is good, but this could be better. I like mm. that because that means that I have something to work towards on my next track that I do. I know, okay, I can be better at this. But if you're just saying you're, you're like, um, I mean, I literally have people that just because they're, they're in a bad mood and they just feel like DMing me sometimes and they're just like, your music is garbage. I mean, that's not <laughs> constructive. <laughs> like, that's you're not being helpful. <laughs> yeah. It's like, please go and get a life. 
<laughs> and half half the people that insult you, actually most of the ones I've noticed, the ones that actually just flat out insult you, don't are not musicians themselves. They don't know how to make music. So I literally I'm just like, that's unimportant to me. <laughs> <laughs> like like go listen to someone else. I never asked you to follow me. You can unfollow me. <laughs> yeah. I'm just happy to not have you as a follower. Literally, like, I just don't reply. But generally, in my head, I'm thinking this person needs something better to do with their time. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Please go and yes. get a hobby. <laughs> or a life. I, I like that life actually. Get a life. Yeah. Yeah. Please um, get a life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you'd have to be a pretty sad person if you are feeling hate online because it's so easy to just sort of sit behind your phone and not take any responsibility for the hateful messages you send people online. So I just think it's a bit of a cop out, really. So when you learned singing, did you also play any instruments apart from playing the MIDI in your in your studio? Yeah, I play um, keyboard and guitar, but I didn't learn that until much later. Yeah. So you took younger, professionally the guitar and keyboard as well? No, I mean, it, it's all self-taught. It's all okay, self-taught. Self-taught. Like vocals I did professionally, um, but at that point in time, um, I wanted to learn professional guitar as well. Um, but my parents just, it wasn't in their budget. They were just like, you got to pick one. <laughs> we can't afford to send you to both. <laughs> so I picked the voice and stuck to that. Wow. You still play? You still play the guitars and keyboards on your, on your songs? I mean, I, I do. I, I don't really. I'm more of a, a studio player. So what that means is, like, if I have to learn it, I'll do it for the song or for the arrangement or for a live performance. But I don't enjoy it, if that makes <laughs> sense. Like, it's not something that I'm, like, passionate about. Uh, like, my passion is, like, um, music production and also singing like I love I love to sing um but yeah with the other instruments it just I think it's because I started later maybe um it's, it was very hard for me to grasp because I started in my 20s and so because of that I, I feel a little like inadequate so I don't like to hear myself when I play because I'm just I'm not that great you know <laughs> I'm very average <laughs> yeah pretty interesting um huh? So, I heard of two of his songs. Uh, first and foremost is the "Take Me Home." Okay, I heard that, nice. and uh, also heard that song called "Dream Guy." Take us through how did you write that, and when did you release that? Okay, so well, by the way, for the audience, I'm saying those two are one of the most popular tracks on Spotify. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because I I released them I think about a year or two ago. So okay. been on Spotify for quite some time now. Um, so yeah, Dream Guy was written after uh, a breakup, and um, I was just frustrated. <laughs> I was like, I don't think there is a guy out there for me. And then I came up with the idea, like, hey, you know what? If there is, I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna write it down, and hopefully, it will manifest. <laughs> so, probably, yeah. probably someone on the internet listened to that song and it's like this song is for me yeah. yeah absolutely I mean I got a lot of calls after I started getting that song out onto <laughs> Australian radio uh, a lot of guys were like hey so are you still single <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> calm down calm down <laughs> that's just the song <laughs> Yeah, it's just a song. But, yeah, so that songwriting process, I wanted to be a very simple song, but I also wanted to express this message of where's my dream guy? You know, is he out there? If he's out there, you know, these are the qualities that I'm looking for. And, um, yeah, that's basically where that came from. And Take Me Home, I wanted to do, like, more of a 2000-style pop EDM track. So that's how that one came about. And that was one of the first tracks I wrote with my producer, Michael, at the time. I just said to him, look, I just want to do like a, like a club track, you know. And um, we came up with an anti-chorus and, um, and the bridge as well. You know, that, that, sometimes I get melodies in my head. 
So those uh, parts, some of them, I was hearing them in my sleep and I would just send him sort of recordings and be like, oh, hey, listen to this. What do you think of this? And he'd be like, yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> so slowly the song would sort of piece together over the space of one to two weeks. So we used to give ourselves deadlines. If we decided to write, start writing a song, we would take about two weeks to finish the whole song. Wow. So we gave ourselves those deadlines. Otherwise, the songs would never get done. This is the frustration we suffer as singer songwriters. So. <laughs> yeah. We have 10,000 ideas and the first song is not finished yet. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's, in fact, that's what was happening with me for so long, for an entire year. And then eventually I said to him, look, we need to get really strict with our songwriting process. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to have like 50 songs and they're all going to be unfinished. We start finishing them before we move to the next one. And that's when things started really coming together and falling into place. Okay. So uh, your recent release, let's talk about the recent release you had. It's called Hope and Healing. Hope to Heal, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's the story behind that song? I think yeah, there's a story behind yeah. this one. Oh, yes. Definitely, definitely a story. Yeah, so, I guessed it right. Now send some butter chicken first. <laughs> okay. I will um, send it across Zoom. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I basically, I knew I wanted to write a song of hope and healing for the world. Um, sort of after my experience of coming back to Australia um, during the pandemic because I was stuck in Mumbai uh, during the whole lockdown and I was by myself and I was pretty, pretty scared because I was like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know how I'm going to get back to Australia. I'd flown there in January 2020 and the pandemic had, I think, started around March, I think around that time. So I just flown back, actually. I was, at, I was in Australia for vacation and then I flown back to Mumbai and then two months later, all of this started happening. So it was very scary. It was like, oh my goodness, like at the time, nobody really knew what was happening, right? It was just this very scary thing unfolding before our eyes. And then everyone thought, oh, India's going to be fine. India's going to be fine. India's going to be fine. India was not fine. <laughs> <laughs> everyone thought, you know, oh, it's, it's a Chinese problem or whatever. Like it's going to stay in China. What the heck is a Chinese problem? <laughs> No, as in, you know, it's, it's uh, the problem of the Chinese. Exactly. Chinese I, I, I was just talking about the people who are saying, like, it's a Chinese problem. Like, what the? <laughs> yeah, like, it's, they will deal with it. It's it's in their country. Like, I mean, everyone sort of assumed that yeah. it won't really come out of China. And three weeks later, what do you know? It's, like, spreading everywhere. So... It was just also because it was scary because, as you know, like being in a country like India, it's very heavily, heavily populated. So yeah. Second think everyone was scared. Everyone was scared. Everyone was like, if this thing comes out in India, like this is going to be bad. You know, people are not going to be able to contain this. And so with the, the level of strictness of that lockdown that happened, I think it traumatized everyone yeah. in India. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like, what is happening? You know, this is crazy. So, yeah, like I knew immediately after that experience and coming back to Australia, coming back, doing one month of quarantine in Sydney, I was like, I have to write a song about this because as a songwriter, that's what we do. <laughs> we write songs. <laughs> we make music about our experiences. And um, it was just, yeah, just let's, And you were like, let's, let's write a song about COVID. Well, it wasn't exactly COVID. It wasn't, it doesn't, it's not specifically about COVID, but it's just about that entire two years where it was just a whole Like how like pathetic were people in their homes? And not just that, it was like there was a pandemic and then there was, you know, the war on the, the whole Russia mm. and Ukraine. Like it's just been an, a mad two years. Yeah. Absolute madness, you know, it's nonsensical, honestly, what's been happening to the world. So, this was my way of kind of saying, Hey, look, we've gone through a really bad time, but we can get through this, you know, and we hope to heal from all of this and we hope to heal from the pain that we've gone through. And um, that's basically 
the story behind it. The song is beautiful. Right? Thank um, you. I heard Glad it in it. five. To, yeah, like I heard, I heard it like five to ten times. Um, oh my god! Wow. Uh, <laughs> Thank so, you. That's really nice to hear. Yeah. Um. What? As music listeners ourselves, what are we seeing from Mona Pate in the future? Yeah. Yeah, good. Oh, yeah, nice question. So I'm working, besides my collaborations that I are ongoing, um, which are all different genres, by the way, there's pop EDM, there's I'm doing a bit of Bollywood, a bit of Punjabi, a mix of everything. Wow. But yeah, a lot of interesting things happening. But uh, my own original release that's coming out is another completely different track that's coming out after this. So it's like there's hope to heal, and the next track that's coming out is like upbeat. Don't suffer. <laughs> yes, like it's it's a completely different concept. It's a completely different story that I a different experience that I went through in my life. So complete opposite. But I mean, I think that's good. I think it's that's coming out as a single. Out. Any album, please? Yes. Um, I am working on collections of songs, but whether or not I'm going to release them as albums, I'm not really sure yet. Because I feel like I've had more of an impact with my music just sort of releasing so far as singles. I feel like people mm -hmm. just listen to them. Resonate um, with them. I'm not, yeah. And also because, like, all of my music is so different. Like, uh, all my songs are so different. I don't know if it would do it justice just to kind of put all these different songs together and release them as an eight-track album. I mean, let's see. Maybe if I feel like it, I might consider doing something like that because it just depends like it depends on my mood I'm a very moody artist <laughs> sometimes I'm in a mood to do this kind of a song sometimes I'm in a mood to do this kind of a song there are so many layers to my personality that come out through my music and um yeah I'm not like the kind of artist that's like you know you you do 10 tracks and it's like everything just kind of sounds the same I don't feel like oh. I have that. Like everything has to be a, like, of, of a different diet altogether. Oh, it's just because there's just so much that I've experienced and so many different ways that I want to express it. I don't necessarily always want to express it in the same style, oh. you know. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strange, I'm a bit moody. <laughs> well, 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 when I heard all of the songs, well, that was not a secret anymore. Um, yeah, it's pretty obvious that I have <laughs> I have sides, I have shades. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's actually beautiful. Um, any tips for singer songwriters, no matter where are where they reside in the planet called Earth? Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's a tough one because I mean I have my days as well. You know where I feel like, oh, what am I doing? Like is this even meant for me? You know, I kind of have like a mini existential crisis every second day, <laughs> but <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, if you're looking to get into music, I would say it's not like, don't come in with rose colored glasses like I did <laughs> because I came in with these rose colored glasses and I just thought, Oh, I'm going to write a song and the whole world is, and it's going to blow up and the whole world is going to know my name. Like <laughs> it's, un it's unrealistic. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Um, that's not how it works um, because there is so, so many people out there making amazing music, making probably better music than you will ever make, you know, but it's not about that. It's about you finding your way of expression and cutting out the noise and saying, hey, you know what, I'm carving my own space for myself. Um, whatever that, however that turns up, however that shows up for me, it's unique. It's always going to be a unique journey. Every artist has a unique journey. So yeah, the one thing that I used to do at the start is like I used to always compare myself like, oh, what's Taylor Swift doing? What's Selena Gomez doing? And now I'm just like, I don't even check. You know, it's not important anymore what they're doing. It's important what I'm doing. So, yeah, I think, yeah, if you're looking to get into the industry, come in with a touch of realistic perspective. Not every day is going to be easy. 
um, you're going to have amazing days, um, but it's going to be worth it. Once the music gets to a point where you're like, oh, I really want to release that, that is worth it. You know that you've, you've come a very long way if you get to a point where you feel proud and you're like, yes, this is good enough for the world to hear. Interesting. So basically everyone has to do a good amount of study and research wherever they're residing in their local music industry scene first. So you have to yeah. start somewhere and then gradually. Yes. And, 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 and skill and being work. the first step. Yeah. And also have, have a level of realism about it. Um, because <laughs> no, yeah, sugar coating. no, I'm, I mean, I wish I had a mentor when I first started off in the industry. I literally didn't have anyone when I started. I just was a crazy girl with a crazy dream. And I was like, I want to release music and let's see what happens. And yeah, it's, I went in with this very like, um, just, yeah, just this mindset of, oh, this looks so easy. Like, I'm sure I, c I could do, but it's, it's not, it's not, yeah. it's nothing as, as it seems. And what you mentioned at the start was very interesting is the music industry, if you're not signed to a major label, um, has something called gatekeepers. So it doesn't matter how much money you invest. You could get a million dollar investment tomorrow for your music. But if you're, if you don't have those contacts to kind of get you past those gates, you're always going to be on the app. Yeah. You're always going to be sort of on the outside anyway. So that's why I don't really, I don't really care anymore. Like, if that makes sense, <laughs> like, like, cause I'm just like, it doesn't matter if I have $5 million in the bank, I still won't be able to get in into the, those circles because I don't want to sign to a label. I, I just, I don't want to sign to a major label at this point in time because I feel like I don't have the leverage to keep my brand and keep my personality and make the music that I want to make. It will become molded into what they want. And I don't really want to do that. So it's about keeping my autonomy and my power and all of that stuff. As an artist, you want to keep creative control of your masters and you don't want to have to give that up to a label. Just um, a manager will do. Yeah, exactly. Like I have managers, I have a PR team now. Um, obviously it took me a while to get to a point where I could hire one. When I started off, I didn't have anything, <laughs> but yeah, it's, you need, yeah, exactly. A manager or a couple of managers, um, d depending on where you're sort of like want to market yourself. So if you want to market yourself in India, you have a manager there. If you want to market yourself in Australia, you have a manager here. Um, and PR teams are very important as well because they can kind of get you um, the free press that you probably wouldn't have access to if yep, you were just kind of doing it on your own. And they have all of those music contacts, and which is great. I think it's great for independent artists to hire a PR team. I always encourage it. Um, and, yeah, and you don't need, I mean, nowadays anyway with the way Spotify is, it's just about getting your music in front of playlist curators. So if you can get your music in front of the right playlist curators, you can be on those playlists for months and months and months. And if they yeah. like you, they'll just keep putting you on every time a new song comes out. So you're automatically reaching new audiences without even really lifting a finger. So there are ways. There are ways. I've had to figure out a lot of things on my own in the last now two we, three um, years. Now we have the... Google and the YouTube university. I like to call them universities. We have Google and YouTube university. You just can go there and search however weird question you have and just get the answer. Yes. Just, just get the damn answer. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Like I was talking about that um, this morning with one of my producer friends. Like we were talking about how easy it is now to just learn how to do anything on YouTube. Like if you want to learn how to digitally market yourself, that's on YouTube. You don't have Coffee. to go and spend thousands of dollars anymore. Like we used to have to back in the day with all of the degrees. It's just easier now to learn. You can learn anything you want. At the most, you might have to spend, if you want to buy a course, a specialized course on something online, for maybe $30. You can get a... And it's kind of worth investing. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 pretty incredible, like what's on, on the internet nowadays. So, yeah, it's... 
I think, yeah, if you have the will, I think you'll find the way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Great way to end. Absolutely. <laughs> ah, that's all the set of questions I had for you. Thanks for joining me again in the midnight from Australia. <laughs> it's not quite midnight yet. It's 11.30. <laughs> nearly there. You're nearly there. Don't worry. A bit of motivation oh, no, more no. and it'll reach 12. I um, think so. <laughs> what kind of discussions we're doing anyway. Uh, once again, thank you so much for everyone for listening to this and thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for joining in. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Until next time when you visit India, we'll go to have some butter chicken and I'll, I'll send me some of his songs for sure. Yeah, and I, you I'm there are on Spotify. obsessed with butter chicken. I'm, I need to write a song about called Butter Chicken now. And like, the first one to listen to that will be me. It, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm and gonna I start writing it right, right now. now. I'm writing right a song now, yeah. about butter yes. chicken. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, oh, thank you so much, and have a <laughs> very bright future ahead. Thank you so much for joining. Me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Bye.